Hello there. In this video, I wanted to talk about generating some hollow ceramic forms that you can use to build more complicated sculptural forms, or they could become the basis for small sort of domestically scaled functional ceramic forms like cups, bowls, etc. In ceramics, when you have firing as a part of the process, you want to ensure that the work you're building, if it has a certain volume, has hollowness. And so a lot of the techniques that we use to hand build ceramic sculpture are um, really incorporate this idea of building hollow forms. So today, the first one we want to talk about is known as pinching. And pinching usually happens from a smaller amount of clay that you can hold easily in your hands. And there's a few variations that I wanna share with you for your own practice. Again, all of these sort of techniques that we're gonna be looking at together are there's no right way to do anything. There are only consequences. And you just wanna stay really curious about the things you discover uh, on your own by touching it your, in the way you touch it and trying the things that you try. Um, because some of those things might lead you to some very exciting places. So there's no right way, but there are some things to know about. And all of this initial activity is to give you a set of skills to start to get your hands really smart to ceramics. So hand intelligence is connected to mind intelligence. But at the beginning, when you're working in clay, um, you know, it, there's a big disconnect. OK, so the more you touch and the more things fail and you understand and you touch again, that's when you start to see your hands get smarter. So what I want to talk about are these pinched forms. I um, have a larger amount here. I'll probably, you know, if I had my scale nearby, it's here somewhere, I might weigh this amount, you know, just to know um, kind of what I'm starting with is weight. Sometimes that's a good way to chart how much volume I can get out of the same piece of clay over time. In other words, it's a way to measure my hand intelligence toward that method. But something that's easy to fit in two hands like this, make sure it's nice and wedged, compressing the clay, okay? So the first way we're going to um, start is to create a solid. And the first couple of ones are gonna be from symmetrical solids. So probably if I were to hand you a ball of clay and told you to make a container out of it, you would get to this intuitively. But there are a few tips. So I'm gonna start with a, a pretty round ball. And then I'm in my, what, uh, whatever your lead hand is, you'll find out some of you are left-handed, some are right-handed, I'm right-handed. So I usually support it in my left hand. I have more confidence with my right. I'm going to use a finger to drop a hole right in the middle of this ball to begin the um, opening of it, okay? The only thing I need to do now, what I wanna make sure is the distance between the end of the hole and the back surface is one where when my thumb is all the way into the hole, I can reach every part of the outside surface with my longer fingers. So I'm ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is start at the furthest point opposite the hole, at the very end of the ball. And usually I use two for strength and also consistency. It sort of helps me have a consistent touch. I'm going to, with my thumb inside and these two fingers working together, I'm going to start pinching the material and try, and I'm really focusing on an even wall of the hollow form I'm building. So I want my pressure to be consistent. Small gestures, take my time. And as I'm pinching the material around, pinching around, I'm pinching it up toward this opening. I'm also thinking, as I'm pinching, of an arched or domed form, like ultimately a bowl form. So there's that kind of arch, arching into the form as I'm pinching up. I'm gonna go all the way up over the rim. I'm really going for, like I said, consistency of thickness as best I can in the wet material. And this is what I got to. Okay, it's pretty crude. The wetter your material, there will be a limit to how thin the wall can be until there's dryness. That when, when the clay dries a bit, it will allow you to pinch it thinner and hold that thinner wall without collapsing. 
So you're always doing things in stages and we're always in ceramics trying to understand that those small windows of timing when it, the clay says, don't touch me. And then when you can touch it again to continue to develop it in the way that you envision developing it. So having, having pinched this first round, one thing I might do is go in. One thing that we're, you're gonna see time and time again is this idea of the arch and the dome as a self-supporting structure that will hold the wall or the shape of your hollow form while the material is so wet, the geometry of the dome it will hold it until you get that stiffer, dried material and the structure of that um, to work for you. So I have an arch, a dome shape, and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna sort of stretch out from the hollowness into the thicker wall. It allows me to change the proportion of this dome. This material is quite wet. So I can feel that I've reached what it will allow me to do and still hold its shape. But I was able to get a little bit more volume out of the wall thickness by just stretching in like that. So now what I want to do is let it dry until, and so I could come back in and refine it some more. So if I let it dry right side up, the hard table will just soften this. Even though this is a strong geometry of a dome, it will flatten the bottom. If I want to have the bottom stay arched, I would let it dry on its rim. And it, you can see the dome um, is so strong that it keeps gravity from collapsing it and is being carried on the, on the roundness of the rim. The second version of pinching so while this is, while I'm pinching this second piece, this is drying. And then when I reach the point when I have to stop with this one, I might come back to this one and now I can touch it again because of the drying time. So it's a very good idea to, in the studio to time your work so you have multiple projects and di different stages going. So that when the inevitability of you having to stop because ceramics is saying, I don't, I need some more time away from you, Instead of just being on your phone or on Facebook, you can turn to another project that is ready for your touch. And so you're always maximizing your studio time that way. So the next um, version of pinching is from a, a symmetrical solid. And we're gonna pinch a long, narrow form from a solid cylinder. So I'm making a small cylinder I'm gonna work it against the table to come up with a solid that's you know pretty symmetrical and even. So I'm just kind of rolling it, paddling it. I want it to look like a little symmetrical tin can almost solid, okay? So now I'm gonna locate the center of the um, circle on one end of the cylinder, and that's where I'm gonna drop my hole to open up, start the opening of the volume of this. So I'm just gonna push down like I did before, okay? Make a hole. Now this is a little bit different than the dome or the bowl because with a bowl, that at the end where you determine the end of the hole, that's where the curve starts and you can just start pinching directly up to arch it up. With a cylinder, you have an open flat floor before you start pinching. So the process I need to do now is measure the distance between the end of the hole and the work table. I'm gonna use the needle tool, which everyone will probably have in a kit you, you have or purchase. I'm gonna put the needle all the way to the canvas, drop my finger in alongside the tool till it hits the bottom of the hole that I dropped and pull it out together. The difference between my fingertip and the end of the tool is how thick the floor of the cylinder will be if I open it at this depth of hole. And that's about right, I would say, three quarters, not three quarters, um, three eighths of an inch is probably pretty good for a small cylinder. If it were thicker, I would drop the hole deeper before this next step. So now I'm gonna go in, hold it in one hand, and I'm going to make an opening just at the end of the hole. So I'm going to go in with my finger, bend it, and just like a sewing machine sewing, a line, I'm gonna punch a groove of space out perpendicular to the hole, so like a flat floor. So I'm bending at the knuckle, I can hold it in my palm to counter. I'm just pushing with my fingertip 
to isolate it to make that groove of space at the bottom. So if you were to look inside of here, you would see the hole and then a wider groove of space in the bottom. That's what, where it is now with a big chunk of clay in the top part. So now that I've opened the floor, I might turn this upside down to let gravity help me stretch it. I'm gonna take my thumb inside. I'm, um, I'm gonna start right where I made the groove with my outside fingers pinching, and I'm gonna pinch and pull. The outside fingers are working a little harder than the thumb. I want it to be pinched and stretched. I'm trying to make a taller form, so I wanna keep the profile as a cylinder, not have it open up more like a bowl. So I move around and I keep going all the way up over the rim. Okay, so you can see I was able to pinch this open form. This takes a little bit more practice, you know, this is a little bit more uh, for most people, it's a, it takes a little bit more time to practice a tall, narrow form from a pinched form. The last thing I want uh, you to try or to share with you is the idea of pinching from an asymmetrical solid. So an example I like to show in this demo, I mean, you can come up with any asymmetrical solid shape and devise a way to open it and then pinch a form based on it. Um, so don't be limited by this, but one idea is, and I'm just gonna do this S form, okay, as a solid. So obviously, I can't put one hole in the middle and then start pinching straight up and have this work out for me based on this S. So the first thing that I, that I need to think about is how do I open this solid form to get access to it as a hot to begin making a hollow volume out of it. So I'm going to, instead of one hole, I'm gonna make a series of hole, holes along the, like a trench, along the center line of the S. So I'm just holding it and punching down a series of holes side by side in the center line of the S shape all the way around, okay? And now, like before, I'm going to start and start pinching the furthest away on the opposite center line on the back between my thumb inside and my fingers on that center line. So I'm, as I'm pinching, I start all the way just at the furthest point. I'm pinching around. Now I'm not letting it be on the flat, hard surface because I don't want the bottom to be flat. So I pinched around um, and I got a little bit. But what I want to do is as I pinch, slowly pinch around and bring the material up, I want it to arch because I want the support of that self-supporting structure of the dome or the arch to be in this form so it doesn't collapse. So I go back around and I'm just pinching around. Whoops. This one's a bit. Okay, so this clay is super, super wet, and this is a little bit bigger. It's almost too big to pinch. So I made this kind of pinched, shallow, kind of pottish form. And one thing is, of course, now what do I do with this? What, how would I use this? How would I work with it? Well, one thing I could do is because I've arched the bottom and it's still so soft and plastic, I could actually arch it across the space and join it just at the rim to make a hollow tube. And the goal is not to collapse it into a solid form, but to leave the hollowness. Remember, we're trying to reduce the clay part and still have the volume, so we need some hollowness in there. So I'm just blending it just at the edge to connect it into this soft pod-like tube. Now it's closed in. And once the air is trapped inside of this soft tube, it will keep it from collapsing and I could continue to manipulate it, twist it, make changes, and the air trapped inside will keep it from collapsing into solidness. At some point before 
it gets too far along in the dryness, I would want to take something like my needle tool to release that air so it didn't stay trapped inside. If uh, the air trapped, would the clay would shrink around the trapped air and you might get cracking in the form from the shrinkage against the trapped air. And if it made it till it was bone dry and you wanted to fire it and there were tra that was all trapped air, that would certainly expand to blow up the shape or is likely to. So one little pinhole will release the air and just make sure every time you're trapping air in a hollow form, it's just released with a, a needle. Okay, that's it for pinch forms for today, and I'll be back in another video soon. Thanks. Bye.